Hi, everybody. I'm international publicist Michelle Tennant Nicholson, and I'm volunteering my time with a pet project called How to Be a Precinct Leader.org. And I am graced with candidate Sam Edney today. Hi, Sam. Good morning. How are you, Michelle? I'm wonderful. So, Sam, I wanted to spend just a few minutes with you today. Um, I'm the vice chair of East Flat Rock Precinct here in Henderson County. And I also volunteered my time over the weekend making phone calls. And this coming weekend, I'll be canvassing in my precinct. And I also volunteered time at the Apple Festival downtown and was actually speaking one-on-one -on -one with voters. So sometimes I'm speaking to voters in my precinct, and sometimes I'm speaking to just Democrats in Henderson County. And in fact, at Main Street, when we were at the parade and the Apple Festival, I actually spoke to Democrats um, from Asheville, from Spartanburg, from Charlotte. So it's always important to hear from candidates like yourself. What do you think we should lead with when somebody says, hey, that's Sam Edney, what's he all about? How can you help guide myself and the other precinct leaders in Henderson County and nearby? Well, I think it depends. Uh, number one, you always want to consider who your audience is. If you're talking to a diehard Democrat, then we need to emphasize gerrymandering because that is the problem in North Carolina and it poses an existential threat. Um, if you're talking to uh, a persuadable voter, then you need to lead with what matters to voters in this district, throughout the district, not only in Henderson County, the top three issues that I hear about are healthcare, education, and the environment. Um, so you would always want to, of course, lead into that conversation with a question about, have you had uh, health problems? Because most older voters have had health problems. Um, and, and listen to their story a little bit and then remind them that healthcare premium, health insurance premiums have risen. Uh, there are more claims being denied every day. And the majority in Raleigh want to make it easier for insurance companies to deny claims. And that we, one of the driving forces behind rising insurance premiums is the fact that we didn't expand Medicaid. And we've already paid for Medicaid. Four billion of our tax dollars leave this state and go to other states to provide Medicaid expansion in their states. Um, that often brings up the issue of, well, lazy people just want to get on Medicaid for a free ride. And that's not true. 50% of the babies born here in Western North Carolina, in this district, those births are paid for with Medicaid dollars. 50% of the children born in this district. The second thing is that 63% of all the Medicaid dollars spent in North Carolina go for elder care in long-term facilities. So they, it affects uh, voters on a personal basis. Um, but you need to listen to what their concerns are so that you can address them accurately. And well, then I hope, you'll, I hope you'll make the point as, as a precinct chair or a canvasser or a phone banker that Sam Edney is 100% uh, is in support of expanding Medicaid and, making, and reducing the cost of drugs and health insurance for the voters in this district. Well, that's what I was going to you right, right on my question, which is, what should we say specifically about you? And that's it, right? So expanding Medicaid. The, so the other thing about gerrymandering, um, what I would really want to point out, too, is that it was in the news this weekend because um, North Carolina was um, tweeted about and it was, and so when we have seasonal and breaking news like that, I think it's important that we as precinct leaders are prepared to discuss that with voters. And I'm sure that, that, uh, that I wasn't the only one who was discussing gerrymandering at the Apple Festival and inside my phone calls. And I'm sure this weekend when we're canvassing that that's going to come up. So what about we just take the Sam Edney line on each of those so that we can kind of echo what you would say so what about Sam Edney and gerrymandering? What's your party line about that that we can echo? Uh, we need to come up with a rational redistricting plan 
I support the League of Women Voters uh, program for that. It's called Rational Redistricting. Uh, they, you have to have the General Assembly involved in that, and the way they've involved them is in putting people on that independent commission and then turn the district lines over to the independent commission and the General Assembly is out of it. That way you separate the politics from the district lines. I think that's a good plan and I think we should adopt it and I will support it as uh, if, if I have the opportunity to vote on that. And then what about education? What, what about if education is their priority? What would we say about that in terms of your platform? I am a long, lifelong supporter of public education. I got out of the poverty that I grew up in because of caring school teachers in public schools and because I would manage to get a degree from AB Tech. So I'm a big fan of public education. In the past, North Carolina has moved forward in terms of household income because we invested in public education. We need to do that again. That includes early childhood education, often referred to as pre-K education. We need that in every elementary school in the state. Second is we have to reward our teachers for the commitment they make to our children with good pay and good benefits. And finally, we need to fully fund our schools so that teachers aren't reaching into their own pockets to buy supplies and materials for their students. And we all know that schools uh, are underfunded perpetually. I'm here to tell you that Sam Edney is gonna vote in favor of public education every opportunity I get. And then uh, what about the environment? So that's also a hot button for people. So especially, you know, in my district, because um, it's, it's, there's a farm focus, right? So what about the environment? Not only, um, you know, all my uh, people who are, are, like I have a lot of friends who are uh, legally involved with environmental causes and so forth, but I also just the average Joe and Jane who live in Henderson County, who they just want to keep their gardens and, and tend to their bees and so forth. So on that spectrum of community environmentalism, but then also like just wanting to be left alone and, and tend to their own land. Um, being left alone is, is just fine. And I, I grew up on a farm, so I understand that. However, we know that corporate polluters are going to um, pollute unless we regulate them and hold them accountable for what they've done. Uh, a major energy company in North Carolina has a $2 million budget for bottled water. And the reason is they've contaminated wells. So imagine if you had to drink bottled water, cook with bottled water, and bathe with bottled water every day. Many, many North Carolinians experience that every day right here in Western North Carolina. It's a fact of life. So at a minimum, we need to fully fund our Department of Environmental Quality and give them the authority they need to hold these corporations accountable. Human nature never changes and people will always cheat in favor of uh, profit. And the only way we can control what they do to our drinking water is to hold them accountable when they pollute. So I fully support the full funding of the Department of Environmental Quality and staffing that department and then giving them the authority to hold these polluters accountable. That problem exists, that problem of folks depending on bottled water exists all across our state. This is really great, Sam. Thank you so much for this direction. So in closing, let's talk a little bit about how, because there may be precinct leaders who are like, I don't know if Sam's going to be on the ballot for my area and so forth. Talk a little bit about what you're actually running for and how it actually then affects the different precinct leaders so the precincts who can make the biggest difference for you can really get active. Say a little bit about who needs to really be helping you and who's like well just like you know interact with democrats in a powerful way when you're out and about that that give us a little clarity for those who are confused on that okay there are 10 precincts in henderson county which are in my district i'm running for the 113th house district that is all of transylvania all of polk 
and the southern part of Henderson. So the precincts are Armory, Atkinson, um, Crab Creek, East Flat Rock, uh, Etowah Valley, Etowah South, um, Flat Rock, Green River, Horseshoe, and Raven Rock. Those precincts are all in my district. So those obviously are the ones that we need to get the word out about Sam Edney. And the key thing, the key point to make is that I'm a Henderson County native. I grew up on a farm. I was educated uh, at Valley Hill School, Flat Rock Middle School, and East Henderson High School. So I really care about these, uh, this area. I grew up here, I've lived here all my life. Um, so I hope that your precinct leaders will get the word out about Sam Edney for North Carolina House District 113. Thank you so much. I have really enjoyed this time with you. Is there anything that you want to tell people, um, resources, like if we get stuck in conversations, resources? I know that I basically say go to the Henderson County website and then go to his website or look for his videos online and so forth. But is there anything pointed you want us to say? Yes, this is going to be a turnout election and women have it in their grasp to make a difference this time around. We need all women to get out and vote. Um, women have been particularly hard hit in, over the last eight years by this General Assembly in particular. Most of the people who earn minimum wage in North Carolina are women. Uh, we know that most of those 20,000 teachers who marched on Raleigh and were dismissed out of hand were women, female teachers. And we also know that they were more concerned with outcomes than incomes. Uh, they wanted better uh, supplies and materials and better facilities for their students. Finally, there are 15,000 untested rape kits sitting in Raleigh and this General Assembly who put a constitutional amendment on the ballot for this fall and called it victims' rights had 15,000 chances to uphold victims' rights and they refused. So it's a women's election. It is also a young people's election. Uh, elections matter to young couples and I've named a couple of ways in which they do matter, drinking water and health care. So we need the young folks to get involved and as a precinct chair, I hope you will work hard to make sure that young couples understand that elections matter in their daily lives. So the other thing is vote early. If there's a problem with your voter registration, you can correct that and vote the same day. Early voting begins October 17th. You can also vote by mail. You don't have to be out of the state or out of the country to use an absentee ballot. So I would encourage uh, you folks as precinct leaders, canvassers, and phone bankers to encourage folks to get out and vote and take somebody with them. Well, I promise you that in our canvassing this weekend and in the calls that we're making, we've been making them in the past few weeks and we will continue, um, we will definitely get the word out about this. And I really appreciate your time today, Sam. Well, you're welcome. And any precinct that's going to canvass in their neighborhoods, if they'll let me know the date and time, I will come walk with them. Oh, okay. I'll send you the date in case you want to join. Um, it's it's going to be Chris, Kathy, myself. And then actually, we've got a, a voter coming from Bumpkin County who wants to help us. So we've got I'll a pack of four. I'm more than happy to walk with wonderful, you. Wonderful. Wonderful. I'll let you know. Thanks, Sam. I appreciate Thank your you. time. Okay. Bye-bye.